If you love weather like me, you're gonna love this video. We are gonna be talking about your late spring and into the summer 2025 outlook update here. We're gonna be talking temperatures, precipitation, your severe weather outlook, your hurricane outlook, and drought and much more. So make sure to like this video if you're just tuning in and give it a thumbs up. Share this video with friends, family, and anybody that you do know on social media. And also subscribe to my channel for the latest accurate, reliable weather information. We do daily weather videos on this channel with also long range updates such as this each and every month. So let's talk about here the Climate Prediction Center did update the long range outlook for what we are expecting with La Nina, Enso neutral or El Nino conditions and their new update actually shows that we are officially in an Enso neutral cycle which is called La Nada and basically that means that we're going to be seeing more teleconnections like the MJO, the PNA, which is the Pacific North American Oscillation, which is also the NAO, the North Atlantic Oscillation, and a lot of other teleconnections that are going to drive our weather patterns as we go through late spring and into the summer months this year. So that is something that we have to consider. And looking as we go even into the summer, June and July here, we're still hanging on to above 50 to even 60 some percent chance of an Enso neutral or a Lenata pattern as we go into the middle of summer. So let's look right now at our sea surface temperature anomalies. And notice we have a big warm blob there over the North Pacific Ocean and over there into the East Pacific a little bit just off the coast of California. We do still have some cooler waters off the Baja of California and the western Mexico coast all the way out there just to the south and east of Hawaii. We have a new warm blob though that has just started to develop here off of the Central America and also South America coast. That is actually going to migrate westward along the equatorial Pacific and that could give way to the neutral conditions even further this summer and maybe even eventually a weak El Nino as we go beyond summer. But we're just kind of looking more at the spring and summer months for right now. So let's look at the projected sea surface temperature anomalies as we go into the new month of May 2025. Notice we don't see much change. We still have a little bit of those bluer waters there, which means below normal sea temperatures for the waters there off of the western Mexico coast extending southeast there of Hawaii, warmer body of water across the north and central Pacific, all the way hugging up to the Hawaiian Islands. And then we still have that warm blob there off of the South American and Central American coasts as well. That is the start of those neutral conditions. Notice as we projected even further into June 2025, you notice that those waters actually become warmer further west into the equatorial Pacific. And then even into July 2025, we see that that extending a little bit further west as well and that could eventually get us closer to weak El Nino territory during the later summer months so that is something to consider as well here in the forecast big driver here for the forecast is also going to be the drought conditions here's the U.S. drought monitor that was released just yesterday on Thursday April 10th 2025 and notice we have the most significant drought across the southern four corners region we're talking Arizona and New Mexico even into Central and West Texas, a extreme and exceptional drought is ongoing currently. We also have some pockets of some severe and extreme drought even extending up the plains into the Dakotas, into Nebraska and Wyoming as well. Also a minimal drought, at least for now, for the Northeast Coast, Mid-Atlantic and down into the Southeast and Florida is included in that as well. Let's look at the drought monitor as we continue to prevail through the rest of April 2025. Where you see the brown on this map, this is where drought is likely to persist. So you can see a lot of that here in the same area as the four corners region, Southern California, Nevada, all the way into West Texas, Central Texas, and then the Northern High Plains, Central High Plains. We're going to be watching the Dakotas, Nebraska, Kansas, and Oklahoma. Those areas could remain in drought. And then across the east, some areas in the green, drought removal is likely, like areas up toward Boston and Massachusetts, Hartford there in Connecticut, New York City, those areas down into New Jersey, the Trenton area, removal of drought is likely in the green. And then you can see areas that it persists a little bit longer where the drought more significant right now that will continue through this month in the mid-Atlantic into the Carolinas, Georgia, Florida, you name it. And notice as we go even further all the way through June 30th, which really takes us through the middle of summer, if you will, 
And notice you can actually see that the drought actually is likely to develop even further across Texas, Oklahoma there, especially the Texas and Oklahoma panhandles, western Kansas, southwest Nebraska, Colorado, and New Mexico. A lot of those areas in yellow there that you see, that is where drought development is more likely and it's going to get more confined in that area. Drought removal likely across the Great Lakes into the Midwestern regions, parts of the Northeast, and even Florida, we expect the drought to remove. And that is actually due to some tropical activity that we could see later on here getting closer to the summer in May and June. So something to keep an eye on there as well. So let's kind of walk you through the temperature outlook here in just a moment. But first, let's look at a precipitation because April so far has been such a busy month in the form of some very heavy rain. We had some significant severe and tornado outbreaks across the eastern U.S. This is just going over the past 10 days. This goes through April 1st. Notice we saw a lot of rainfall from that from the Ohio River Valley south and west into the Tennessee Valleys and the mid-Mississippi Valley as well. We also had our fair share of some moisture across the west coast. And then you look here at the west in general, it's been pretty dry outside of the west coast like Seattle, Portland, all the way into northern California. You can see these brown shaded areas in here across the Rockies. It's been pretty dry across the Rockies here over the past 10 days here of April. We look at the central U.S., the north. Northern High Plains, the Dakotas, Nebraska, Minnesota, and Iowa, those areas have been a little bit wet at times, but not wet enough. So we actually need some moisture in some of those areas. We're already in drought in some of those areas. We're going to continue to be in drought until we can get some more moisture up there. But look at the mid-Mississippi Valley here, and we're talking some very heavy moisture in Arkansas, southeast Missouri, southern Illinois, western Tennessee, and Kentucky significant flash flooding has been ongoing in those areas, river flooding included, and that is going to continue until we can get some drier weather. And look at the east. The east has been pretty wet as well. The northeast a little bit drier. Florida especially, coastal Georgia and South Carolina have been pretty dry, especially coastal areas of South Carolina with the brown here. We need some moisture in those areas, and I think we do get it the deeper we go here into April, but I think especially May and June as the tropical season starts to heat up. So let's look at our temperatures here in our precipitation as we go through the rest of April. This is your height anomaly map. This is basically showing you in orange and yellow. This is where your ridge is across the west. In the blue, that's where our trough is. The trough axis is mainly going to be eastern Canada in the northeast U.S. So we're going to continue to see this northwest flow here from Canada into the eastern U.S. That's why we've been seeing all the cooler air and that continues to remain the case I think through the rest of April. Frequent cold fronts will be coming down whereas the west will have frequent warm air and even some record high temperatures through the rest of April with our ridge axis extending further off to the west here. So you can see that very well in the temperature anomaly map here for April 2025. Cooler here where you see the whites and especially the blue up toward the Hudson Bay, Ontario and Quebec. That's where we're going to be a little bit cooler than normal here with frequent cold fronts and that trough axis sitting across eastern Canada and the northeast U.S. keeping us cooler for the remainder of April. There still will be some warm days, don't get me wrong, but I think the to rule the roost, it's going to be a lot cooler across this region. Now out west, the ridge axis out here is going to be sitting out west and we have the drought too. That is kind of feeding back into our temperature regime. So you can see we're going to see warmer air across the west and then down across the south central here extending into the southeastern U.S. for the rest of April. The wet weather will continue to be the case across the central U.S. from Texas all the way to Lake Erie. I think these areas that have been hit hard by very heavy rain and severe weather events will continue to see some heavy rain and severe weather events as we go deeper into April. Dry across the southeast Florida, we're watching you for drier weather in April. And then out west will kind of remain a mix of some dry weather and some wet weather at times times through the rest of April. Now heading into May, you can see the ridge axis is still out across the west. The trough is not no, really any longer up across eastern Canada, so a little bit of a change, and we're actually seeing lowering heights across the southeast. Now later into May, this could become a problem close to the Gulf and into the uh, east coast of the United States, like the Carolinas, Georgia, and east coast of Florida, as we could have tropical activity that could fester down here into the Caribbean and the Gulf and even western Atlantic Ocean later in to May. We're talking May 15th and onward, so something to keep an eye on there. 
But as far as temperatures are concerned through May, still remaining pretty warm out across the west and the south central and then warming up a little bit, at least moderating temperatures into the Great Lakes and northeast and still seeing frequent cold fronts through here. I do suspect we'll see some cooler spells, maybe even a frost and freeze risk as we go into May across these regions as well. And we look at the precipitation. May looks to be a wild card month, really across a good chunk of the United States and southern Canada when it comes to precipitation. I think the teleconnection like we talked about at the beginning of this video, like the MJO, the PNA, the Pacific North American Oscillation, and the NAO, the North Atlantic Oscillation, is actually going to play a big role in who gets precipitation in May. I think right now the tropical activity it's showing on here for Florida and parts of the Southeast Coast would be possible with the lowering heights in the Caribbean, the Gulf, and Western Atlantic Ocean. We could have some tropical induced rains and maybe even a tropical storm or hurricane even as early as the mid and late portion of May. We're just going to have to wait and see. It looks like near normal to slightly below normal with precipitation across the middle of the country there in May. It's just going to rely heavily on our teleconnections. Now as we go into June 2025, the ridge from Mexico is going to start to build northward toward Texas and Oklahoma and that is going to heat us up. Triple digit day is going to be coming back for Texas and portions of the south and we could even see some record high temperatures here into June. And notice the West and the Central U.S. going to be heating up in a big way, well above normal temperatures in June. It's still a little bit warmer than normal in the East, but I suspect, again, we're going to have some cold fronts coming through in June that could kind of keep our temperatures near normal uh, across the Eastern Seaboard. And especially if we see tropical activity as well. Looking at June, June looks to be a little wetter across the east and very dry in the west and central U.S. So if you're in the Great Plains and westward to the Rockies and west coast, looks to be a very dry June ahead. And this could actually lead to a significant drought developing or expanding into the Great Plains, the Rockies, and the west. And some of that could even nose its way into the upper Midwest with the drought as well, like Minnesota, Iowa, and Wisconsin, and Illinois, Missouri those areas. I'm very concerned about the Western Ag Belt. The Eastern Ag Belt looks wetter and this could be a pretty wet scenario here where we could even have flooding rains as we go into the month of June. July looks like the ridge access is going to be across portions of the Four Corners region and that means some extensive heat will be building further north into the United States and it looks to be across the Pacific Northwest and the Great Plains where the most intense heat will be in July. Some of those heat waves could expand east into the Midwest and the Mississippi Valley, something to watch there. July near normal in the Southeast does have a signal for potentially more tropical induced rains and you can see that very well here in July and you can see the greens building across the Southeast. Tropical induced rain, some severe weather events with heavy rainfall as well in the East. Very dry underneath that ridge axis. So the upper Midwest, the Plains and west of the Mississippi River are gonna be very hard pressed to see moisture in July. So we're going to have to rely on those storm complexes if we can get them for moisture in the Western Ag Belt. Now, as we go into August 2025, finally, the ridge starts to relax a little bit, but it's still pretty strong across the West. We have lowering heights in the lower and mid Mississippi Valley. This means that any tropical activity here along the Gulf and Caribbean that infiltrates the areas of the South Central U.S., like Texas, eastward to Georgia, and Northern Florida, could bring moisture up the Mississippi of River Valley into the Ohio Valley there in August and keep us a little bit cooler in general with the heat wave really expanding more into Western Canada at this point in August and the Western United States with more normal conditions, maybe even slightly below normal with our temperatures in August across the East with maybe some tropical rain potential and maybe even here a landfalling system near the Gulf that could move up the Mississippi Valley areas really along and east of the Mississippi River would be more apt to see this as we go here through the month of August. So now let's look here at my severe weather forecast moving forward. This is a severe weather outlook for May. And notice here in the yellow, it is possible we see severe weather, can't rule it out, anywhere in the United States there in May. Where you see the lighter red, the cherry red, that's where it is more likely. So the Midwest, southward along the Mississippi Valley, all the way to the Southern Plains. And then a secondary area highlighted as well with a likely scenario from West Virginia, Virginia, Eastern Kentucky, southward there into Alabama, Georgia, the Western Carolinas. Those areas could have more tropical-induced severe weather threats, so that is something we'll continue to monitor 
as we go later into May. And notice in the maroon red, that's where severe weather in May is very likely from East Nebraska, Iowa into Illinois, southward into Eastern Kansas, Missouri, Eastern Oklahoma into Arkansas and North Texas. That could also include the potential of a couple tornado outbreaks that could be significant here. So along and west of the Mississippi River into the Eastern Plains, is where we're looking for the potential for that into May. Now, as we go into June, the severe weather and climatology shifts a little bit further to the north. So we're seeing more of the severe weather into the upper Midwest, lower Midwest, the Great Lakes, into the mid-Atlantic. And notice where you see the maroon red there from essentially southeast Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, northern Missouri through Illinois, much of the Ohio Valley into the mid-Atlantic over there. So areas like West Virginia, Maryland, Virginia, and North Carolina, those areas are going to be more likely to experience what we call a windstorm in the summer or a derecho. It has a big rush of wind with it, maybe some tornadoes embedded with it. That is more likely as we go into June is that heat wave across the south central and western U.S. We call them ridge riders and they kind of move right over the apex of that ridge and that could be possible in June. July is a more likely analog for that to happen this year. I think it really kind of follows the 2012 scenario late June through mid-July would would be the most likely time frame to watch out for these significant derechos. And if you're in eastern Illinois through the Ohio Valley, mid-Atlantic, and down toward the southeast like North Carolina, we need to be on high alert for this in July. I think the pattern it could be very conducive for some severe weather events, including a couple of significant derechos on the northeast quadrant of that ridge of high pressure that should be anchored across the southwest U.S. and the south central U.S. That's why I did include an expected area there as we have some high concern for that to happen. Now, as we go into August, we see the derecho pattern shift a little bit back further to the west into areas of the Ag Belt. So we're talking Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois there, Indiana, Ohio, and southern lower Michigan, northern Kentucky. Kentucky. That's where we have a very likely chance of that to happen sometime in August. Tropical induced severe threats with tornadoes and all hazards would be possible along and east of the I-35 corridor in East Texas. Could be as far north as Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Tennessee, but really watching the Gulf Coast states. And then into the eastern U.S., well, like Virginia, uh, Maryland, Delaware, all the way down to the Carolinas, watching for potentially some tropical induced severe weather threats there as we do go into the month of August. So overall, what we're saying here for the rest of this summer and coming forward through the summer is we're going to have a big ridge of high pressure that's going to be anchored across the southwest and the south central U.S. here with some warmer air at times penetrating, for, uh, penetrating further off to the north into the upper Midwest, the northern high plains, and the Pacific Northwest. And that's what was going to give us a lot of warmer air. Now, the most significant heat wave we're expecting is is out west. So if you're in the Pacific Northwest, the Rockies, the Great Plains, get ready. We could be seeing a very significantly hot summer as we go through June, July, and August. Still some heat wave potential in the east, but I think a lot of this is going to be due to some wetter ground, keeping us a little bit cooler, and some tropical and severe weather threats that will keep us cooler here as well. We look at precipitation, and it's a big nod to that, right? We have more drier weather with drought-stricken areas in the Great Plains. Parts of the upper Midwest, a little bit. The Western Ag Belt is of a concern at least a slight concern, Iowa, Missouri, Northern Illinois, uh, Wisconsin, and Minnesota, the UP of Michigan, for uh, some drier risks in here at times. But I think some wetter weather will try to penetrate those areas at times throughout the summer. I think it's more likely in the Eastern Ag Belt, like Indiana, Ohio, and Kentucky, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia, where we see more of the extensive rainfall this summer, June, July, and August when you're adding it up, and more severe weather and tropical weather threats as well in general. So that is my spring and summer outlook update. Make sure to thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like the video, comment down below, and subscribe to my channel for the latest, and I'll see you all in the next video.